Alright, so the next step I'm going to go over is um, how I created the clothing for Sasha. So the first step I'm going through here is I'm just masking out um, kind of like block-in meshes for the clothes that I'm going to make. So her costume is a bit complex, so I just wanted to block in some shapes. Um, and I'm going through this by um, polygrouping things, um, extracting the mesh out, and then uh, running a Z-remesh through. Um, I'm right now I'm just masking out the edges, um, creating a new polygroup, uh, and Z-remeshing by keeping the group, so at least I get a nice clean edge on all of my geometry. So after I finish that for all the main parts of her costume, I can get a better idea of what my character is going to look like. Um, so the next step would be starting to build things. So I blocked a little bit more in here. Um, some gloves some of the metal bands, some straps, where those are going to lay out. Um, anything organic is where I blocked it in in, uh, in ZBrush. Everything hard surface, I'm going to use Maya to model all this. So here you can see I'm modeling some of the gears that are going to be on the outside of her, um, uh, her knees. And uh, I'm going to be creating like my high poly and low poly at the same time when I work with hard surface stuff. Uh, I'm adding supporting edges so that the supporting edges will be there when I subdivide for my high res. Um, I'm going to model the knee plate as well. Alright, so now that that's done, uh, I just kind of keep working on all the pieces uh, one by one. So most of the tiny tweaks and any retopologizing of my costume I do inside of Maya. And uh, here I'm just making a block-in mesh for the flower, and then I bring that into ZBrush, and I'm just extracting the petals out, and I'm going to model each uh, petal one by one, and sculpt them all to create the flowers on the side of her um, her skirt. I'm just going through like the very different parts of the workflows of creating the costume, because if I went through everything, oh boy, we'd be here for, for days. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'm going to work with Dynamesh and then probably Z-Remesh or retopologize these in Maya later. Um, just going through and doing the last minute touch-ups for the petals after I sculpted them. Cool, so now they're there. So now I'm going to work with the base clothing pieces and I'm going to retopologize these uh, in a way that will work for the the piece of clothes that it is. So I'm kind of just fixing anything that the Ziri mesh didn't do a good job on um, and adding any edges that I might need to uh, emphasize or perhaps cutting the seam for where the uh, the pants or sorry the shorts uh, buckle together. So here we have like the final kind of block in, or sorry, the final model for the, the shorts and the belt, and I will probably bring the shorts into ZBrush and do a sculpt pass as well. So here I'm creating just the uh, skirt piece that will be positioned on the back. I'm adding a internal polygon that I'm using as an elastic to scrunch it. Um, and then I'm tacking it to the belt. And I'll just use this insert multi mesh brush to uh, position the chains nicely. It takes a bit of time to get this to work and to get the right length, but you can always move it with the move brush. I think I did a little bit after I positioned it in a nice way. And yeah, here we go. Moving with the, note, the move brush slightly to get it in the right position. So after I did the uh, retopology for the Marvelous Designer skirt, I um, created like a little bit of a trim 
and I put this to the base of the skirt as well by wrapping it to the flat version of the um, export from Marvelous and then blend shaping it uh, to the finished skirt shape. I'm just merging the points so now it's all connected and then I'm just going to run the blend shape wrap those together and then blend it over so now the trim should line up to the bottom of my retopologized mesh For the clothes, for, uh, the corset and the jacket, for the most part, these two, I had pretty good topology coming out of ZBrush. There wasn't a lot I needed to change. Um, I did need to add like the gold trim that it was around the edges of the, the jacket and the corset. So I need to do that uh, in a nice way inside of Maya. So for both the corset and the jacket, this is the process I went through where I just uh, duplicated the outside edges, added uh, a bit of an extrude, and created the geometry for around there. Just adding all my supporting edges so when this smooths it will look okay. And then you can see the same on the corset. Just making sure to work in symmetry so both sides are the same. The same kind of look for the bevel as well from the corset to the jacket. And I also grabbed the um, parts of the jacket and the corset that I wanted to have uh, like a seam in so then I grabbed that and I beveled it and um, transformed the edges downwards to create a seam when it's smoothed just so I don't have to sculpt this in ZBrush because this is a much cleaner way for me to get that look So for the UVs, uh, for the socks, sorry, um, I wanted to make sure I had like perfectly straight UVs so that when I imported them into ZBrush, I could run a stripe uh, pattern down them in a perfect manner. And then I could get the stripey pattern on the socks really easily with the uh, surface details. So if I go into surface and I plug in uh, the noise that I'm going to use, which is the stripe, and then just uh, scale up the, the plugin, turn the noise off, and then this is how I generated the uh, stripes down the socks. You can change the different styles of stripes, but this is kind of what matched my concept the best. So then I made sure to subdivide this high enough and apply it to the mesh. So I did the same for the gloves and also the socks. So here's the stage where I added some more wrinkle detail to the shorts that I modeled. My low poly for the shorts are going to look much different, much simpler, but for the high poly this gave me a really clean result uh, for how I modeled it. So I'm just using the uh, some a fold brush that I have in my library from uh, someone named Selby. I'll also go in between clay buildup and also um, using damp standard as well for wrinkles and I go and I smooth it out a lot too so that I can get some of those serious uh, buildups out that I don't want.
here I'm just like, I'm not adding super wrinkles, I'm just trying to bake, break up the, um, the perfect smoothness of the fabric, because in real world, uh, you know, I know this is a stylized character, but no fabric is really perfectly smooth like that, so anything I add will help uh, to influence the textures I add later. I'm trying to be careful not to change the forms uh, too much, though. So next I'm going to uh, be working on the block-in for the uh, skates mesh. The shin guards were built in a very similar manner, as well as the goggles and um, anything basically hard surface, the holster, all that stuff. So I basically create a basic block mesh so I can figure out the proportions of everything first, um, according to my reference and everything. Um, then after that I move into uh, doing the final details for uh, all the other pieces as well, once I have the, the proxy mesh put in place. So here I'm just making the sort of boot shape for the shoe. And I'm trying to keep it as low poly as possible for now so that the, um, the shapes don't get disturbed. Right, so now that the basic boot's done, I'm just going to block in the position of where the wheels and the size of the wheels should be. And then I can start uh, working on the details of the, the skates. So this isn't really a complete proxy, but it's good enough for what I need to see the proportions of the, the skate to be. So now uh, this is where I'm kind of like just finishing up the last little proxy of the brake here. I uh, modeled the final version of the wheels so those are uh, those are finished and then I kind of keep chipping away uh, slowly at pieces of the model as I go. I'm just continuing to go through um, polishing the pieces here and then that's basically the whole workflow for the hard surface modeling. I'm just making sure that there's bevels and everything um, so that the high poly looks great when I smooth it and then I will make the low poly out of these shapes as well. Here's the last little tweak before the shoe is done. So this part is just talking about how I uh, place the hair cards all by hand. So I made a texture um, for all the hair and then put them on cards and I've just been placing them one by one to create the hairstyle that I need. And the uh, braids are just generated geometry and then placed in hair cards to give it some breakup as well. Um, and then this last stage, I just wanted to share with like how I group my and organize my UVs for my final um, exports. So these are all combined and put together inside of Character Creator based on the uh, if it's going to be a clothing or accessory and all that stuff. So this is how we bring it in. So I'm just going to uh, make sure that my body is in ZBrush. And so now it's here, and I'm going to uh, use the Subtool Master to multi-append all of the OBJs I just exported. And now everything is in here, all nice, and I've lined up the guns as well that I modeled to her hands as best as I could. Right, so now I'm just going to go see all of it back, and it's going to send everything that I just modeled all in here is new objects and you can go through and update the actions of everything. So
So whatever is going to be an accessory, you can update to accessory, and everything that's going to be cloth and skin to the model, we can update as a cloth. So we click uh, update at the end after we've gone through everything here. And if there's things you don't want to import, you can up, uh, turn, check off the mesh uh, button there. Or if it's just updating mesh and not texture, you can change the action template to just mesh. So the accessories are anything that are going to follow a bone, and the cloth is anything that's going to be skinned to the body. Um, so things like the earrings and the guns will be uh, accessories, and uh, you know things like the shorts will be uh, cloth. So now I'm just going to pick the parent bone that the accessories will follow when the body is posed or moving. Um, and this is just the last stage for importing uh, the objects.